Meredith, hey, you gotta come out here. I got something, I gotta show you something. What is it? I just wanna show you. Brian Johnson, did you get a puppy? Yes. It's me. No, you didn't. It's Tiger. Oh. <gasps> hey, bud. Wait, is that really ours? Yes, he's just a puppy. How old is he? He's 12 weeks old. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Ryan, that's a horse. It's my puppy. It's my puppy. I love him. What's going on, everybody? Today I've got this Husqvarna weed eater that does not seem to want to start. The only way to run is if the choke is off and is at full throttle. Kind of believe me to believe I've got a fuel issue going on here. So let's go ahead and get this thing apart. First thing we'll do is take off the air filter cover. Then we will remove the air filter. That will allow us to access the two 5 16 bolts that hold the air filter housing and the carburetor on. In order to remove the air filter housing, the carburetor has to be at full choke. And the last thing you do is try to get these fuel lines off. They are a pain to get off, so first I'm going to unhook the throttle cable and then go ahead and get these fuel lines off. Now two-stroke carburetors work a little bit differently than four-stroke carburetors. There is no bowl, so there's no fuel that's actually sitting in the carburetor. What actually happens is that a little bit of air from the engine pushes this inlet needle valve open, which allows fuel to suck into this carburetor, and then the air that's going through the throttle body will actually suck that fuel out and also close the inlet needle valve. So this fuel metering diaphragm here will continue to vibrate back and forth as you go. So the only two areas of the carburetor we can actually clean is this fuel metering diaphragm and the primer pump you see me pushing there. So let's go ahead and get this carburetor taken apart. So the first thing we're gonna do is take off the housing to the fuel metering diaphragm. You want to be really careful when you take it off not to tear it to keep that gasket intact. You see there's a little bit of dirt and grime in there, but it's not incredibly dirty, but that is enough to keep it uh, running rough. Now we're going to take off the primer pump. Really not much dirt in there. Now we're going to get a few sprays with some carburetor cleaner. Now I'm going to take apart the actual metering device and the fuel needle valve. Um, it's hard to tell on camera. There's a lot of like dirt, grime, and sand inside this carburetor. It doesn't really show up too well, but it is there. So I want to make sure that I get it out of the, um, the fuel inlet needle so it doesn't stay clogged up. All right, now I'm just taking a needle, working it through the passage just to see if I can get any other that loose grit or sand out, especially around that uh, fuel inlet needle. That's it, now we're ready to go back in. Drop the needle back in place. Put the spring back in. And then we'll put the lever arm back in place.
The next thing I want to look at is I noticed when I was taking off, these fuel lines are really, really corroded. So I'm just going to take them out and go ahead and swap them for some new fuel line. Here's a close up. This is actually what I was seeing inside the car right now. I was cleaning it out. It looks like there's just so much sand buildup inside this fuel line. It's hardly getting any fuel through at all. And to demonstrate how little fuel is actually going in, this is my redneck experiment. This is me blowing through the line that was actually on and it was dirty. And then here's the same shot with the new fuel line. In order to get the new fuel lines in there, I kind of try to cut them at an angle so they'll go in a little bit easier. There probably is an easier way to do this than what I'm showing you, but this is how I know how to do it, so this is how I'm doing it. So you just get it started and then you kind of keep working it through with your fingers until it's long enough for you to reach in and grab with some pliers. After you get it started and you can grab the other end, it's really not too bad to finish pulling it all the way through and get the length you want. So there were two splices in the fuel lines from the factory. They were inside the tank. I don't really think that uh, they belong there. Now you could put this back together and not put these splices in at all, but I do think it would actually change the pressure at which the carburetor sucked in fuel and it may change the way it runs. So I want to put them back on, but I'm going to put them on the outside of the tank. That way if it ever needs to be serviced again, it's a little bit easier to get to. And the reason I say it would change the way the carburetor runs is because the splices themselves have a smaller diameter hole than the actual fuel line, which would increase the vacuum. Don't forget to put your fuel filter back on. I actually think that's what happened in the first place is that the fuel filter actually came off inside the tank and allowed it to suck all that dirt and grime for a few seasons until it was not able to run anymore. Next we'll put the other half of the splice on our inlet fuel line. and get it down to the length we want. Now this fuel line does not need to go in as deep. This is the air return for the primer pump. So the primer pump will suck the fuel out of that first fuel line and then let any air escape and then go back into the tank through there through this fuel on here. Now that we got them together, you want to make sure your throttle cable is working like it should. You hooked it up correctly. You make, make sure you put it on full choke so you can put the air filter housing back on. Tighten down your 5 16 bolts. And same as everything else in this carburetor, it's pretty much just kind of German torque, which is good and tight. I did notice a small hole in the air filter, so while I wait on a new one, I just cut up a t-shirt and put it over it because I don't want any more dirt, grime, or grease to get in there. It's not a permanent solution, but it's a it's an easy fix so I can cut the grass tomorrow or the next day without having to worry about it. And that's it. All we have to do now is crank it up and see how it runs.
So I'm noticing that it's idling a little bit rough, and I imagine that's going to need to be fixed. A quick adjustment of the idle screw, and you're good to go. And that's it. So that's pretty much all you need to know to fix the Husqvarna weed eater. And I will carry on, I know I'm going strong I know where I'll belong, against all evil Fight them all alone, standing tall alone We finally won and they're gone, rise above evil